Today is February 4th, 2023. And 40 years ago today, actually 40 years ago at 9.51 this morning, Karen Carpenter passed away. Now, we had the duly departed tours, obviously, and we shut down a couple of years ago, but every weekend closest to when Karen Carpenter passed away, we would host our Karen Carpenter tour. And it was all the relevant locations around Los, An Los Angeles that uh, that we could get to in a matter of, it took, it actually was a long tour. It was like a six or seven hour day, but it, it wasn't necessarily comprehensive. It wasn't about every single move that the Carpenters made, but it was all about where they were and where they made their records and where they lived and where, the, where Karen died and, and her grave. That's where the tour actually finished. Um, but we're just Carpenters fans who listened to her music and talked about her and watched some videos, etc. So it was really good. Now, I have a few things that I've collected over the years because usually these kinds of videos start with my collection. And I have, in, in grade school, this had to have been 1975 or 6, uh, I used to play the clarinet and band. And one day they asked me if I wanted the duet. This is some kind of interesting story in my life anyway. They asked me if I wanted to do a duet. And the woman that they I did the duet with ended up being, I found out during my lunch hour when we were practicing, ended up being my cousin. And I had no idea. I went home and said to my mom, you know, I, I'm doing this, this duet with this other girl. And she goes, oh, yeah, you know, that's your cousin, don't you? They live like six blocks away. I'm like, no, I didn't. That was really weird. But anyway, she and I did a duet to Top of the World. I still have the sheet music. And I sent it to Richard Carpenter. And Richard Carpenter actually signed it for me. So whenever that song came out, actually, uh, I imagine it says on the back of this, but uh, it actually doesn't. But this, I sent this to Richard. I told him the story, and he sent this to me. He also signed uh, this, which was the Carpenter's box set, which I just... Wow, that seemed better days, too. But uh, this was the Carpenter's box set, which I bought, which was fantastic. And I imagine they probably released uh, everything again somehow, some way, and repackaged it. But but I loved these uh, this, uh, this CD package. And I actually received from a friend, Paul, this. This is one of my absolute prized possessions. This was the Carpenter's second studio released album and paul got this for me and you could see it's signed by richard and can you get a can you get a shot of that without the reflection and you can see karen and richard both sign this thing and so paul thank you for uh for uh for helping me procure this. I appreciate it. Uh, I, I, I gotta say, during this video, I'll be spouting a lot of facts, and, this, and I, I borrowed some of these facts, or I should say used some of these facts, from a book called uh, Little Girl Blue. It's by a guy named Randy Schmidt, and this is a fantastic book. I use this on the tours. You can see it's well dog-eared with all the uh, the notes that I that I used on the tour. So with respect to him, some of the information comes from this. I'll not read it word for word because that would be rude. But uh, but some of the information you're going to see is from this. And also a really nice uh, fan of mine, a supporter of what I do, Leslie Parker sent me these. We'll be going through these one day. But these are all the Carpenters fan club mailings that she sent me to go through. Mike Dorsey and I are going to do a podcast about the Carpenters at some point. But all of these, these are like monthly fan club notes from, from the Carpenters that they put out officially. Officially. And it's all this weird little information. You know, do they have brothers and sisters? No. Karen was an, were the only youngster. Do either of them have nicknames? Believe it or not, no. What type of clothes do they prefer? Casual, neat, clean. What's their favorite group? The Beatles. <laughs> when they released their first studio album, it was actually called Offerings. And then with the success of their single, Ticket to Ride, they reissued it as Ticket to Ride. Their second album was this one, Close to You. And they, they produced an album called... Uh, this one, Now and Then, I think that's their fifth album. And that house you'll see in just a little bit. They actually, that's an illustration of the house in Downey where they lived. Now, this is actually a memorial booklet from Karen's funeral. This wasn't actually physically at the church. This was a fan club, uh, a fan thing that was sent out to the fan club. And thank you to, uh, as a donation, my sister and brother-in-law sent me. I was able to get this because it weren't cheap. But uh, you can see this is the, the order of service at Downey Methodist, United Methodist Church, which you'll see in just a moment, where Richard used to play uh, the organ during services. And uh, Karen and, and Richard attended that church. And you'll also see both of her burial locations. 
But this is something I can tell you no one else has. This is a bizarre little keepsake about Karen Carpenter. Now, Karen Carpenter's casket, most modern day caskets come with called, what's called a memory tube. And there's, it looks like just a bolt on the side of a casket, just looks like this. But if you unscrew that memory tube in it, this, this comes out, the cylinder comes out, and in it is a rolled up piece of paper. And in this is relevant inf information about the deceased. And this is Karen's. I covered up her social security number, but you can see this was her address at the time of her death. This was her birthday, where she was born, New Haven, Connecticut. Father, mother, Harold and Agnes, and uh, immediate family, Richard Carpenter, her brother. And it's, this explains how she died and when she died. And the, uh, and the burial was, I believe, uh, it was February 8th at, uh, at Forest Lawn, Cyprus. And uh, eventually, you know, whoops, <laughs> eventually her, uh, her body, as well as her parents, were removed and uh, moved elsewhere, which you'll see. These are, this but is my carpenter's collection. Oh, and I also got to thank uh, a woman by the name of Robin, who was friends with Karen Carpenter. She actually gave me this when we started doing our Karen Carpenter tour. So this was my, my uniform uh, when I did the Karen Carpenter tour. So again, this morning, I set the clock because I'm out of batteries. 9.51 a.m. was 40 years ago that Karen Carpenter passed away. And today we're going to take you on a trip of Karen Carpenter's California. So directly in front of us is Downey High School. And the athletic field, well, I, we'll go around to the other side where you'll be able to see the athletic field back there. Karen was enrolled in Downey High School in 1964. She joined band originally just to avoid gym class. She played the glockenspiel in the marching band, but she didn't care for it very much. And her friend was drumming. Uh, her, his name was Frankie Chavez, and she asked if she could trade with him. So she started playing drums, and she fell in love with it. She graduated from Downey High School in 1967. She received the Philip Sousa Band Award and then went on to be a music major in college. Across the street on the right, 6124 Santa Monica Boulevard. It's the former location of Drum City, where Karen Carpenter used to take drum lessons. Now, I know there's another drum shop, a very popular drum shop that's over on Vine Street that people are uh, more synonymous with Karen Carpenter, and that's where she bought her first professional set of drums. But when Karen decided to take drum lessons, she took them here at Drum City. Her teacher was uh, Bill Douglas, and Bill Douglas was a well-known jazz player who uh, played with Benny Goodman and Art Tatum, very well-respected, uh, great teacher. In fact, it's funny, I got, I got a chair upholstered there a few years ago, I had no idea. I think there's plans for these buildings to be torn down. It's looking like it. It's looking good. It's looking very likely. They weren't one-hit wonders. They worked quite hard at their career, even at one point playing the Whiskey A Go-Go when they were a band called Spectrum. Eventually, in April of 1969, they were signed to A&M Records. Herb Alpert and Jerry Moss signed them to A&M Records. The studio still exists, actually. It was originally Charlie Chaplin's studio on La Brea and currently is the home to the Muppets, Jim Henson's Muppets. And here's the front door to the studio that the Carpenters used to play in. And according to my buddy Mike Dorsey, uh, Karen Carpenter still, they say, haunts the sound stage or haunts the stage that they used to record in. They say if they don't play uh, a Carpenter song before they start a recording session, the recording is useless. So this is the Karen Carpenter Haunted Studio. They actually were together, the Carpenters, Richard and Karen, for 14 years. They sold over 100 million albums. That's not downloads. That's physical. Somebody went to the store and bought over 100 million record albums. Something I forgot to mention earlier, on the cover of the Offering album, Richard wasn't happy with his hairstyle. He said, of course, I had the dummy oily hair, which embarrasses me to this day, but a later visit to Sebring's salon and his trademark cut would rectify that.
So, although Jay Sebring was murdered, uh, Richard Carpenter went to Sebring's salon. He had his hair styled using the Jay Sebring method. So, with Karen and Richard's uh, first money, really, they, they were told to invest it. So, they bought two apartment buildings here, and, uh, and this was their first... They don't own them anymore, but these are their first big real estate purchases. If you look at this building on our left, it's called Close to You, and this one is called Only Just Begun on the right. I know I called the, uh, yeah, they bought them in 1971. They, uh, and in February 2018, uh, the one bedroom in there was 1575. On Thanksgiving Day 1970, Richard and Karen moved into this house with their parents, Harold and Agnes, at 9828 Newville Avenue in Downey. And this house, hands down, became sort of the Graceland for Carpenter's fan. Still is, actually. Every year when we went on the tour, there was always another group of people, uh, sometimes busloads of people, going to see this house to pay their respects to the Carpenters. And this is the home that Karen collapsed in the morning she died. She actually had a place, a condominium in Century City, but she was staying in this house at the time that she collapsed the morning she died. Uh, the, the mother wouldn't let him move out uh, uh, separately, I guess. They didn't want them to be separate, so Richard and Karen agreed to buy a house together and move into it together. And this dead house that they moved into is this one on the corner on our left. But this is the house on the left. So let me find my cheat about this. Okay, I'm just I'm probably repeating what I just said. They bought their parents a 3,000 square foot house with four bedrooms and three bathrooms on Lubeck. Okay, that's this street. The expectation was that their mother and father would move into this house. When they explained this to their mother, she absolutely refused to leave out of the other house. Not only did she refuse to move out, she couldn't understand why they would want to be separate and living in two different houses. Richard was never particularly fond of the Newville house and agreed that he and Kara would move to Lubbock, while Agnes and Harold stayed at Newville. The decision to move in together seemed natural for Karen and Richard, whose careers came first. They were first and foremost a team, and at this point, they saw no reason to live separately. I've read so many different accounts of this, but uh, the mother, uh, you know, wouldn't let him move, wouldn't let her move out unless they moved in together. On the last night of her life, Karen had dinner with her parents, a shrimp salad at Bob's Big Boy, which has since changed hands several times. After the shrimp salad, after they left the restaurant, she said she was still hungry, so they bought a taco at the taco stand next door. And later on that evening, she supposedly finished that taco on the uh, kitchen counter and said, boy, that was good. The family sat and watched the film, the miniseries Shogun. Karen went upstairs to Richard's old room where she slept when she was visiting. She preferred it because it had a TV and a VCR. And that night she watched an episode of Magnum P.I. Now on Friday morning the 4th, Karen got up and went to the kitchen and turned on the coffee pot. She went upstairs to get dressed. At 8.45 a.m., Agnes, her mother, heard the closet door upstairs from the kitchen. She could hear it through the floor, I guess. Karen's up, she said. Rather than call for her upstairs, she picked up the intercom and, and phoned up and there was no answer. And she went to the bottom of the stairs and called for Karen as she was walking up the stairs and there was no answer. And she entered the, uh, the bedroom and found Karen's motionless body face down on the closet floor. Her eyes were open but rolled back. Agnes said, I picked her up and called her and then I called for Harold to call for help. Downey Fire received the call at 8.51. Three firemen and two paramedics arrived and found Karen unconscious, but they detected a slight pulse. 
She looked very frail and thin. They moved her to the bedroom from the closet where they did CPR. Paramedics told Harold to take Agnes away. She phoned Richard. They arrived at Downey Hospital at 9.23. She was in full cardiac arrest. Everyone, some sad news leads our news today. Singer Karen Carpenter, who with her brother Richard brought soft rock to the top of the charts, died today at Downey Community Hospital. The hospital confirms that they were not able to revive her after she was rushed there for treatment today. She was 32 years old. She had become ill at her parents' home in Downey and then rushed to the hospital where she died of full cardiac arrest. Karen Carpenter was brought to Downey Community Hospital at about 9.20 this morning, Chuck. Uh, in full arrest. Uh, we administered to her and she expired at about 9.51. How was she transported to the hospital? She was brought by uh, paramedic and ambulance. When you say in full arrest, uh, do you mean that that was the cause of her death? Uh, we can't say that. Um, all future, uh, the families requested that all future information regarding uh, Karen's case come through their agent. This is the Utter McKinley Mortuary, the mortuary that handled Karen Carpenter and her wake. Karen's friend Robin sent me her personal account of the service. Karen was in an open casket wearing an off-red pinkish suit, red nail polish, with mosquito-like netting over her. Um, now, sometimes they'll put like a, a cloth, a see-through cloth, sort of acts as a filter because uh, Karen didn't look so well when she died. It makes, you know, it sort of takes the uh, the edge off if you, um, if you, uh, yeah, it, it just makes her look nicer. That's me talking, not Robin. The second I approached her casket, Robin says, I wept. I felt like it took me forever to get to her, but when I did, I looked very closely. They did an all right job on her, but you have to remember the condition she was in. I remember lots of makeup. Her hair was short, dark, and curly. Her face, looking through the mesh, looked very old and tired. They had this theater-like roping sconces to keep people away from the casket, so I couldn't get as close as if I would liked, or I would have kissed her on the cheek and said goodbye myself. I also had written a note to her, and I wanted to place it in her casket, but uh, I wasn't able to get that close, and the mesh would have stopped me, so I left a single red rose. Richard and Agnes and Harold were standing in an alcove just to the right of Karen's casket. There were a lot of private sort of detectives or police officers there to uh, stop anyone from taking any photographs. There were maybe 20 chairs there for the whole wake. Unlike any other, where there's usually a row for the family, this wasn't the case. Ten chairs on the left, ten on the right. I remember it being a small room, red curtains like drapes, and typical funeral music being played. It just felt wrong. I also remember that people didn't sit for very long. They walked up to her casket cried, said goodbye, and left. So you can see the church on the left, and uh, there's a little clip on here about the funeral. with her song and now her life has become a song for the world those words were spoken today by the pastor at karen carpenter's funeral about 1500 of her fans waited for hours outside the downey united methodist church her closest friends were there too singers olivia newton john and dion warwick and her brother richard carpenter had a lot of hugs for friends at the service he and his sister developed a loyal following as the award-winning team the carpenters you came from where Them. Just for this funeral? Yep. If there's one funeral that I didn't want to miss, it's hers. And I just wanted to drive down here and mm -hmm. give her a farewell. She meant a lot to a lot of people. A private burial ceremony followed the funeral at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Cyprus. Karen Carpenter died Friday last week at the age of 32. Medical examiners have still not established an exact cause of death, but they do say that she died of cardiac arrest. Robin remembers the service being absolutely beautiful and the Long Beach Choir singing, Only Just Begun and Close to You.
Afterwards, Karen was taken by hearse and procession to Forest Lawn, Cyprus, where she was placed in a beautiful crypt down the end of a hallway in the mausoleum. The crypt was inscribed, Karen Carpenter, a star on earth and a star in heaven. Ultimately, Mr. and Mrs. Carpenter passed away and were placed in the crypt with Karen. And there they rested until December 11th of 2003. Richard had his parents and sister exhumed from Forest Lawn Cypress and moved to Pierce Brothers Valley Oaks Memorial Park in Westlake Village, near his present home. Karen and her parents remained in their original caskets. They were placed in the private family mausoleum in the Tranquility Garden section of the cemetery. There was no service held on the day of the reinternment. Richard and his wife were there as witnesses. Richard seemed content to be near his family once again. Traditionally, after the tour, we leave Karen's grave and we drive back to the dearly departed tour's office where we raise a glass in memory of Karen Carpenter above her sink, her bathroom sink, actually. Yes, we own Karen Carpenter's bathroom sink from her last home, courtesy of my buddy Mike, who procured it for me several years ago. Now, this time, on our way back home from Karen's grave, we it, it was raining for a little while, and then it cleared up and the rainbow came out, and then it became an insane rainbow. It became two rainbows, and it was so bright, so absolutely vivid, we drove literally into it. I mean, you could see we were in the colors of the rainbow. It was like, I've never seen anything like it. And uh, even people were stopped on the roadside to, uh, to take pictures of this thing because it seemed so absolutely unbelievable. And we head back to the, uh, to the office and we raised a glass above Karen's sink. In 1994, the Richard and Karen Carpenter Performing Arts Center opened on the campus of their alma mater, Cal State Long Beach. In the lobby of the center is the Richard and Karen Carpenter exhibit, a permanent display of awards and memorabilia of the Carpenters, or as they like to say, Carpenters, not the. The actual name of the group is Carpenters, not the Carpenters. It's something I'm sure that people will point out in the comments below. Anyway, the display is there for anyone who attends an event. Uh, they do shows and concerts, etc. On display is Karen Carpenter's Ludwig drum kit and her famous t-shirt, Lead Sister. The electric piano and original sheet music to Close to You uh, that Richard used for Close to You. And there was also on display an item that Karen gave to Richard as a joke. She used to kid Richard that he had so many female fans he would have to beat them off with a stick. So on display is Richard's Beat Them Off With a Stick stick. Thank you everyone who's watching this video. I sure appreciate it. Please like it and thumbs up it or thumbs down it and please subscribe and hit the little bell. You'll be notified if anything new gets posted. I sure appreciate it. I want to say thank you to the people who are sponsoring my page. Down below this video is the Patreon link or the PayPal link and the people that are supporting me financially are really making a huge difference in my life and I appreciate it. Uh, very much so. Amy Gillespie, Christian Esser, Joe Joseph Gregory, Brenda Michelle, Jennifer Fries Frieder, and Jim Oot, my buddy Jim Oot. Thank you very much. And for your continued support, Sarah Weaver, Chiming In, and David Hopkins. Your support means everything to me. And it is everything to me. So thank you so much for watching and your time and your attention. And until next time. Figure out where the rest of the melody is. I'll sing it.